And that's what it looks like. Specifically for trappers. And we've got our bacon in there. Our condiments tin. Hello, welcome to Waypoint Survival. Today, we're going to talk about our 1920s woods wandering kit. Stay tuned. Just like today, people in the 1920s and 30s enjoyed getting out and going through the woods, the fields, crossing streams, going just for a hike or a stroll, enjoying the beauty of nature, perhaps checking out a hunting site or a camping site for later on. Now they didn't carry a huge amount of gear, it was generally just a foraging expedition or something to just see the sights and as I said before to enjoy the beautiful sights and sounds of nature. And some of the gear they carried was not dissimilar to some of the things that you and I might carry in a more modern setting. I'm going to show you some of those, so let's get to that right now. One of the things you would for sure want to carry would be some sort of a sturdy hiking stick. Now this is more of a, a staff, it's not real tall, but uh, it's made of hickory, would be very strong, be great for pushing aside brush or clearing cobwebs, and also for self-protection if you might need it. Not necessarily dangerous or threatening, but definitely a good tool to have on hand. Naturally, you'd want a good felt hat to keep your head protected and warm. If it got cool, also to guard against pesky biting insects. You would also want some sort of an overcoat or jacket. Remember people back in the day, they dressed up well when they went out. And again, a nice tie, subtly blended into the rest of the outfit, but adding to the look of someone who was out in the outdoors during that era. Around the waist would be a nice belt carrying the all-important canteen and a tomahawk or hatchet, whatever you preferred. And then around the other shoulder would be slung some sort of a haversack. This is a Spanish-American War haversack and my great-grandfather was actually a medic in the Spanish-American War. The pants would perhaps be some sort of a khaki military type trousers, something that would be really heavy and sturdy for walking through the woods. You would also want some good sturdy boots and tucking your pants legs into the socks to keep all the bugs and especially ticks from crawling up your pants leg. In the right pocket you might find something like this, a sturdy pocket knife or jack knife something that would be able to take a razor edge and would be sturdy and strong enough to handle the rigors of outdoor use. In the left pocket we might find a pocket fishing kit, a cork for a bobber, a split shot sinker, some cord, and a hook tucked into the end of the stick where it can't get loose so it can't poke you through the pocket or get caught on something. You also would carry perhaps a small box of matches, something that you could use when you're out into the back country, carried in a protective match case. For water you would carry some sort of a canteen, more than likely a vintage military canteen, something from a previous campaign. This of course would keep you well supplied with water wherever you were and making sure that you didn't just have to drink out of the creeks and streams, although that was pretty common back then. The only other cutting tool you might carry besides a sheath knife you might opt to carry a small tomahawk or hatchet. And this is one made by Estwing. It was made in the 1920s. The patent was applied for in 1924 and granted in 1926. Specifically for trappers, it has a point here which you would use to reach down into the water to grab a hold of the chains. And then also a claw hammer attachment on the back for pulling out the nails where you had your sets nailed in. The haversack is pretty interesting. Again, this is from the Spanish-American War. Pretty old, but still very functional and in really good shape. It's got a flap on the front and a small catch down here, buckle. Open that up. And inside we have the contents of our haversack. The first thing that we see on top is this bacon tin or meat tin. And uh, these go back to the First World War and great for carrying your bacon. And this one has the tinning still intact inside so it is food grade safe. And we've got our bacon in there. We also have our condiments tin. And on the very top, this lid unscrews 
and we have our sugar. You can see that. Good old sugar. And then the top here, the lid, has a small thing that opens, and this is your salt. On the other side of the tin, it's double sided, we have some loose tea. And this would be for making tea when we're out in the back country. Pretty handy little device. The next item that we have, wrapped up in brown paper, simply a potato. Something easy to carry, does not require refrigeration, and we can easily fry this in the bacon grease and so make a nice little meal out on the trail. We also have a small aluminum cup, something that we can use if we find a, a clean spring or a stream of water if we don't want to use the canteen. This is also for our hot tea. So that was the first pocket. This is actually divided up into three. So the middle pocket here is the one we were working in. There's also one here in the front where this button is and uh, that, that you can put other things in. We don't have anything in that one in particular. But getting toward the back pocket then, as there's three divisions, we find that we have this leather pouch. Inside we have just a ball of cord, very useful for anything on the trail, making repairs and things like that. The only other item we have in here are some bullion cubes. And there are five of them in here. These are things that we can use along the trail if we need to uh, cook a meal, if we find a squirrel or something like that. And again, just a hot drink, extra salt, and uh, very useful in a lot of situations. Next, we have our fire kit. And if you remember, I just showed this in a previous week's video. But these are the items that we carry inside of it. We also have a small frying pan for the bacon and for frying up the potato slices. Along the sides of the haversack, there are some small pockets, small pouches. You can see this. And on this side, we have our knife, it's a table knife, of course. This other side, we have our spoon, as well as a fork. And these are our eating utensils, of course. And there it is, all laid out for you. This is what you might find in a typical 1920s woods wandering kit. This is James Bender for Waypoint Survival. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also make sure and check out the links in the description box below just under the more button. While you're down there, you'll also find our waypointsurvival.com link. And this is where you can sign up to take survival and bushcraft classes here at our beautiful training facility in Southern Ohio. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel. We'd really appreciate it. And when you do subscribe, make sure and press that bell button so that you can stay notified of all of our upcoming videos and we'll talk to you next time.